This is how I live. I live. This is what I love. Oh. This is all the things that my dreams have been made of. Welcome to my life. This is what I love. This is what the soundtrack to my life is made of. Music love life. Crystal Jordan, be honest in myself, Mr. Kevin. We are Music Love Life. Welcome. 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 He has risen. Welcome back, guys. Yeah. It's, mm-hmm. been, it's been a minute. It's been a, but, well, I haven't been here in two weeks. Yeah. Well, no, we haven't either. Oh, okay. I didn't yeah. know. I thought you guys were. That I thought you just guys proves were you don't ever watch the YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a busy couple of weeks. It's been a busy few weeks. Happy 421, though, right? Right. Right. Are you high still? A little bit. Okay, you high still? I I still oh. smell it in my shirt. Oh my! Same shirt. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you pass. You just nope. pass out. Nope. You it's no. forty and slip or whatever they call it. Hey. <laughs> so how many days a week you think you wear that shirt? <laughs> 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 or is that part of the weed? You gotta you gotta keep it on there. Yeah, you gotta keep right. a weed shirt. So for so that responsible weed smokers, keep a shirt. Just for smoking. I don't okay. believe that. Okay. So, okay, why? What is the what is the um, importance of four? What what is why four twenty? Why did you all pick? Yeah, this? who picked that day? Yeah, what does that mean? Um, I, I don't know. Uh-oh. A bunch of people. I didn't do oh, it. Oh shoot! So it was just, it was, I, you don't arbitrary. know the history behind your people. religion? Oh hush! Let me. <laughs> it, it's people on the West Coast that did it, and it caught on. It was just that's, arbitrary, though. It yeah, didn't have like, I remember. No, there's not. It's not an explanation. I mean, it's, it's not like a religious holiday. No, there's no weed know. god. No, there's no weed guy. <laughs> okay, that's cool. I, don't I was know, hoping it was people bigger. are so serious about it, though. I think Killer Mike from, but I think it's Killer Mike's birthday also. But so I do think we party. also, you know, recognize we acknowledge other smokers. I'll say that. What does that mean? Uh, we 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 acknowledge important smokers, people who Willie Nelson, uh, Snoop Dogg, what? famous famous people who have smoked to get acknowledged. Dave Chappelle. Famous people who have smoked or yes. who have done who are something known for, for smoking? famous people who are known for smoking weed. So like Willie Nelson though is like he's like a weed activist. Yeah. Snoop, I love him. Snoop isn't. Like, Snoop's Snoop just is. a weed advocate. Yes. He's just a smoker. He is a smoker. Avid smoker. Name right. people, you Name can people. you can do both. Find you someone who can do both. Yes, but just because you can don't mean you do. Willie Nelson actually is out there like yeah, really camp- in yeah, Congress and, for it. You know how long he was smoking beforehand <laughs> though? I'm just saying. Like he it, was Willie Nelson's like 80. He was smoking since his teens. Can Willie Nelson be the weed Jesus? He could. Okay. It's, well, he's white, though. He looks Jesus-ish. He's white, though. Ah, he, look, he acknowledges he, that Jesus, white Jesus is white. <laughs> oh. that was Your unexpected. Jesus is white. Oh, nope, nope. We're not doing that, we're not doing that on Easter. <laughs> even <laughs> okay. I, right, even right. I can say we're not doing that on Easter. Oh, God. Are yeah. you serious? You have to respect people's we're beliefs. We're not <laughs> beliefs. <laughs> Fuck people's beliefs. No, you have to respect Why do we beliefs? have to believe? You don't, ha- you don't have, have to believe something. You don't have to believe. I just want to know. believe anything. You want to know what? I don't want to believe. I don't want to Believe and be misled I want to know It is or it is not Right but uh, Wherever you are in your path You have to give people The right to be Where they are in their path Exactly okay, have Whether, your, whether have you're your ahead path. Or behind Or it's a different path Or whatever Yeah, yeah I, I think that I On think- Easter we can give them a day Come on man It's one day Just give them a day I don't wait till tomorrow Okay I'm going to be here tomorrow There you go <laughs> I'll call you <laughs> Hey you busy <laughs> Oh man! So four twenty is a big is a is a big um. What what is? I don't, I don't know. What, what are you is, doing? What are you doing four twenty besides I smoke? smoke? I I smoked and actually read the Mueller report. Okay. Oh, what do you think? Now, now I that's I wanted to ask you guys. So th- the shenanigans continue, right? Mm-hmm. And it appears that the Democrats are doing <laughs> everything they can to take down every possible brick surrounding Donald Trump. I guess in hopes. Of impeaching Donald Trump, like what? What? What are we doing here? What is the purpose? It of doesn't all this? appear that they necessarily have to do much. I mean, they said that the only reason he didn't commit collusion was because people wouldn't do it for him. So, he, so you're saying he didn't commit collusion? No. Okay. Yeah, actually, yes. Okay. I am well, where's the crime? Didn't. It's not that he didn't try. Where's oh, the crime? But you can't really. It's not that he didn't try. He just failed. Tr- where's the crime? But you can't go to trial over trial. I'm trying to figure <laughs> out what what is what are we doing? Like, now. what is the what is the goal here? The end goal because. It, it's a lot of a lot of uh, the American people's time is being invested in watching this BS is happening politically. So I'm trying to figure out what is the plan. Is we're, that what I we're doing? I think the plan is we're going to get him out of office so that Mike what? Pence can run the country. Oh, sh- that's that, that. And see, that's what I'm talking about. 
<laughs> planning is poor because it, we are like going to get rid of Donald Trump. If we, which, if that was impossible, like, it's not like anybody else could have picked his running mate. You but know, I'm just saying, so why, so yeah. why be so focused on impeaching him when the when right. the alternative to him is worse? I don't know. You that. know what? I'll say. I don't this. know that he's worse. I, you don't do think, think, <laughs> I do think he is. I, I do think a lot of the things that are happening there are a distraction mm -hmm. from what our true goal should be. I agree. Which is building a more perfect union. Is that not what America There's is? not going to happen. At this point, the Republicans and Democrats are fighting worse than Bloods and Crips. The Bloods and Crips have, have come together. Mm -hmm. Even yesterday, a good friend of mine, shouts out to Rashad Ritchie. He had a, 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 I was a part of a forum where gang members came together and squashed it to make peace. Meanwhile, the Democrats and Republicans are as, div well, there is not a bigger divide in the country at this point. So I don't, I don't know that we're moving in that direction I think that we are moving In a more divisive way And then we're also lose. Some people are just like F it I'm, I'm good Like this is just too much I don't even want to be involved I've been involved. there what do, you, do you consider yourself A Democrat? I don't I, di I, con I used to consider myself A very conservative Democrat But okay. now at this point I'm just I don't want to be a part Of the, either party Because it's so It's so obvious That everyone has Their own agenda That it has nothing to do With the better, betterment Of the, the average person Like it has nothing To do with me it has nothing to do with you, nothing to do with you. It's all about this upper 1% and control, and it's ridiculous. Well, I will say See, this, though. Did y'all owe a whole bunch of money in your taxes this year more than the other year? I, my taxes didn't really... I don't know what I they were talking I about. I did. You owed more? I did owe oh, more. Why? Yeah. Did you file I used to, differently? I used to get back, and no, I didn't file differently, but I used to, some of the stuff that I used to be able to claim, I couldn't claim Maybe it's because you like make more money now. Like, when you start making more money, then you yeah, never, like you never like get money you back. Not claim? Is that possible? Uh, did you, make a, did that, you have a significant increase in, in your income? From this, yeah, from this year to over the th previous year? Yeah. Uh, no, no, not really about similar. the same. Okay. So what I'm saying, give us an example of something that you claimed before that you couldn't claim this year. Um, uh, Like, Mileage on your car, mm -hmm. right? Um, uh, business, ex certain business expenses you couldn't you couldn't claim anymore. But certain do you, stuff do you, you deserve those business anymore. expenses? I don't know about. It. I think it's how you how you how you. How you're what do you mean do you deserve the, the quality? The, that's not the, how you, the qualifier is whether or not you're worthy of. of yeah, it is. Having you, started a business, if you if, if you go through it, and you got honest. receipts to prove it. You have you logs of you using your car for that. business purposes, other than clock punching in somebody else's clock. I'm not talking about your person on your personal stuff. You have logs and receipts for everything you did. Yeah, and you couldn't claim any of that. Right? Are you sure? Yes. Yeah, I don't know about that because I, I did. I filed a Schedule C and I was able to claim all that stuff. I was stuff. too. I don't maybe you got to you got to file it differently. Maybe I'm gonna say maybe you filed it differently because I I've but I don't. I think you yours is probably different than mine because I only am a small business owner. So that's so that I didn't I didn't have. Now I'm thinking maybe if you have both or something, maybe it's different. But I I was able to. That could be because a lot of a lot of people work a regular job and then and, have their and then have the their side. own business yeah. on the side as well. So yeah, you know, maybe that that's could have that's what I did. I, I filed it's an LLC. I filed it as sync the same way. Well, I no, filed Mary and then I did a Schedule C for my business. Yeah, and I deducted the things that I needed to deduct. I, I I promise you. And I've and but it's been so long since I've gotten a return anyway. I was yeah. I wasn't looking for one, but yeah. I actually I don't got either. some back. In state this year yeah. I haven't gotten back money From my tax returns In years See that's the th That's the problem And I think And I'm not saying That I'm a I'm not saying That I'm a Donald Trump supporter What I am mm. saying Is that There is a narrative That is not true It is all emotional It has nothing to do With reality And I have not seen A difference In anything In fact And I, I was an Obama supporter I the, the Obamacare I had a, I had a politician come on the show I did on, on unrolling out and we we're talking about health care. I don't I don't exactly know what Trump is trying to uh, propose against um, the affordable health care plan, but I that that was that was a little bit difficult, you know what I mean. But I have not seen any negative negative uh, effects to my personal. Financial situation Or period Since Trump has been in office Neither. But there's this big narrative That he's this evil person He's horrible for the country But It has not affected me So that's another reason Why I don't feel like I don't really want to be involved In all this Going back and forth On CNN With Republicans and Democrats Because it seems very It seems very um, a, a big distraction From the reality And really I just feel like As a small business owner I am literally. My goal is just to get myself into a place of financial freedom. I cannot worry about the reds and the and the blues. You know what is funny? Because every, every time you speak, I end up saying you're sounding more and more hotepish. 
There's really? there's some that was yes, happened? yes there's oh. some because like a, a lot of people were saying even when he got elected people were saying yo we survived Ronald Reagan we survived George Bush. True, we did. We survived the other George Bush. True. Yes. This one ain't going to be able to do nothing that's going to tear us down. Oddly, we didn't survive Bill Clinton. Many people went to prison. Oh, wow. Many, see, many people went for three strikes. Many that's people a whole did nother, go to prison. That's a whole nother But whole have you ever thought about that? We, we, you're right, though. We survived all those, those other white guys. But the white guy was supposed to be for us. Well, mm. truth be told, we survived that. We we were impacted by that. The the ninety four crime bill was definitely a heavy blow, and we had a lot of people that are impacted and still are impacted. Well, not but only that, can the, I? The core of us is still out here. Yeah. Can I say something also about the Clinton? And I and I, I don't think that 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 was his intent, but I think that a lot of the the policies that Clinton put in place, um, actually seemed really great in the beginning. But I think that's part of like the mortgage scare and all these all the, the things that happened in our economy that went horribly wrong right after were all a direct result of that. So you had people that were able to I mean, there was so much fraud going on with mortgages and loans and cars that all of that, those big balloons and arms were all a part of of how people were able to get things and people felt like, oh, President Clinton's in office and we're able to do all this stuff. And then as soon as the term was up, the, the aftermath of all that came. And then we saw people losing their homes. The The whole real estate industry crashed, you know, because of all the fraudulent things. That, that was from Bush, though. It could, could this survive through Bush to, to get to Obama where they bailed everybody out. So Yeah, but I'm just saying it started with Clinton, though. Yeah. It definitely started with Clinton. I, that's why I can't Ooh. be a, I don't I can't be a Republican because I just don't believe in any of it. But I cannot be a Democrat based on the the, the new slavery ideas <laughs> that you know. There there people smarter than me made this shit up. But but I I just I I totally can see the connection between how Democrats treat us and disrespect us and the the end result of of us continuing yeah. to be in the same place yeah. that we were since the civil rights. Yeah. But you know what? Now they're and I'm speaking to the black side of you. They're speak. They're dangling reparations. Who is? They're dangling. I've heard it. Democratic politicians in their platform. They're, they're dangling pandering. both reparations and a universal basic income. They're pandering, and it's insulting to me at this point. That's 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 one of my issues with the Democratic Party. Now that they realize, oh, the blacks aren't just going to blindly give us their vote. They've they've some of them have woken up and realized that we're not actually doing anything for them. Then they're dangling this rep. And there's, to, in my opinion. And this is where you probably won't think I'm a whole tap. I don't think there's a realistic way to do that. There isn't. You know how much money so, it would cost? I know. It just, it just isn't going to happen. And so the, the black folks that are sitting back waiting on it, get up, get out, and figure out your shit because it's not going to happen. And I, I take offense to the, to the Democrats that are even trying to. It, just, it feels very much like, you want a cookie? All right, I'm going to give you a cookie. Stand up and, and follow me and you'll get a cookie. Fuck that. That's what election season has been and for, that's for decades. It. It's, yeah. been, it's been tell them what they want to hear. You know, they want to hear this. And, 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 and so when they go to speak to a certain group of people, they're like, hey, all of those Negroes, are, they're super predators, right? They're, they're terrible people and we got to get them off the streets. We're going to be tough on crime. We're going to be tough on drugs. And then they go to other people. Parts of town, and they have a totally different speech. So, so here's here's you know, my it's, thing: it's what it is. If you know, if universal basic income is um, enacted, and it does away with welfare, food stamps, all those kind of things, I actually probably would be for that. If we did one, not the other, but if we did one and the other, if they did both, nah, it's just another, it's just another crutch. Well, here's here's and and matter of fact, I would encourage people to go watch on HBO Go because a lot of them are watching Game of Thrones right now. As they should, you can be. also you can also scroll over that? and there's a documentary by Vice called The Future of Work. I'm not so sure about Vice anymore, but okay, well, I'll it's, look at it's it. called The Future of Work. Tell us about and it. And what it's talking about is the impact of technology on people's jobs and people's jobs being displaced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard right? about this. Okay, and and that's one of the things. Well, since all of these jobs are being displaced, like we're gonna we're not going to need truck drivers, we're not going to need cashiers, we're yeah. not going to need call center people, we're not going to need uh, fast food workers, right? Mm -hmm. uh, even Amazon, a lot of that stuff is is even being fulfilled by partly by robots as mm -hmm. well. So since a lot of those jobs are being displaced, the only way to cover people is to make sure that there is at least something coming in the hands of each adult. Yeah. To cover the the lack of work, that, I don't agree. You know they don't need it's being done by robots. I don't agree. Even after the invention of the cotton gin, 
by the white guy who stole it from the black guy, we still had <laughs> slaves. I, even after the computer started and the Y2K thing, now there are more tech jobs than there ever have been. Even though there are more computers, there are more tech jobs than mm. ever. Well, I you think know, that it, it even talked about that, but I too. Think, but, but is it the type of job, though? But it's yeah, the, it's the type, type of job. job. So yes. you have to be more a skilled worker. But I, that's what I'm saying. So I, I, I'm i not sure the, the guy's name... But even name, the skills, even the skills, at some point, they'll be done by computers, too. But that's, 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 that's intangible. What is tangible is that... If you don't have the skill set that fits this new economy, you're going to be left out. Right. So I, I saw, I can't remember the guy's name, and I, I should have looked that up. This is poor production on our part, or my part. You. But yeah, my part. <laughs> I said my crystal's part. But there is there was a guy that came on the Breakfast Club, and he was basically saying that the African-American demographic is going to be... Was he Asian? He, he was Asian. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's running for president. Yeah. yeah. He was in a documentary as well. Okay, yeah. that's, what I, that's what I sound yeah. like. So, so I, I think that... To me, that does feel like our community needs to needs to be more concerned about things like that. And I do think there's a huge disconnect because we are all a part of a of, of a what middle class group that you know we we have skills that would allow us to segue into this new new place, or we know how to go out and, and create a job that would serve us. Right? There are a lot of African Americans that don't fit within that that aren't in our circle. And I think that we have to re- realize that in our community should be more and more uh, proactive about figuring out that disparity as opposed to Trump being in office or not. There are, I, I did some work with a, a nonprofit group called One Economy when um, uh, Obama was in office, President Obama was in office. And they were basically taking computer software and installing it in um, housing apartment complexes that were, that service underserved children that did not have access to computers. You realize our kids go to school and there are computers in their school. You know what I mean? They're in their classrooms. I mean, your children went to a very advanced school that had all types of things that other kids wouldn't be exposed to. So you have kids that are going to school and using iPads every day. And then you have groups of children that are in these underserved areas that have not even aren't getting on a computer at all. Our problem is in what, 10 to 15 years, those children are going to be adults and there's not going to be any place for them in this economy. And that's going to create a huge divide that I don't even know what to, you know, what to think about, you know? Doesn't uh, Metro PCS or Boost Mobile give you like four phones? For free? Come on! I mean, they got they got. I think all kids have access to technology. But that does, but technology having a phone and going on Instagram is not teaching you how to use programs. And yeah, I think having a phone and have having the tools, science, yeah, is different. And I definitely think, and I definitely think they are on Instagram. But a lot of if you look at Instagram, like you, most of us, you know, we, we populate with people that are in your circle or things that you have. In, in common Sometimes I'll just be online And I'll look at some of the other, Some of the memes that come across Or some of the videos And the grammar is un, I mean there are memes With huge misspelled Like things that don't even make sense Like yeah. incorrect grammar And things like that And it's like Who are these people But then I realized I have a very segmented You know View Perspective Because my perspective Is from other Either very very well educated or very affluent people, and we have to realize there's a whole nother world out there. To me, that's the bigger problem because I don't feel like it is Donald Trump's responsibility. It should be, perhaps, but I also feel like we look at other other communities and other cultures. They're very proactive with their own. So if you look at the Asian culture, they're very proactive about their own economic empowerment. Mm-hmm. If you look at the Hispanic culture, they're very they're very proactive about this is what we're doing. I think I shared with you guys, one of my friends that's Mexican was like, I don't care if Donald Trump likes me or not. We're making more money. We're we're building, but they don't care. So I just, I feel like the conversation has to be more about, okay, we know that we're moving into a different, a different, um, you know, stratosphere as far as how work and employment goes. What are we going to do about those of us that aren't at this place? There has to be some programs set in place, or and it, it needs to be from black and brown people. I, I totally agree, and and uh, Killer Mike agrees with you as well. That's, that's why you know he ad- advocates that a lot of people learn skill trades, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Stuff that you can do with your hands, whether yeah. it's whether it's barbering or construction, right. um, what to make auto a mechanic, living. right? Right. What build a computer, whatever it is that you can do, mm-hmm. you should be able to do that in. This next economy. I right. know we, we always talk about uh, people becoming entrepreneurs and starting their own business where you need those skills to be able to do it, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't necessarily need more uh, more salespeople, right? Right? We I can order shit offline. I can I, I don't need 
somebody else to sell me some more shit and that's your business. Mm -hmm. But if you can provide a service, if you can build a house, if you can Mm -hmm. power wash or paint or whatever the hell it is that you do, that that is what makes you viable in this new economy and also in this community. Right. And I think in particular, the burden is on black men Mm -hmm. specifically because black men were the ones that were disenfranchised from a lot of those other jobs. Mm -hmm. Black men weren't able to even be taxi cabs Mm-hmm. Right, they couldn't even drive a cab before because there were certain regulations that were put in place that disenfranchised us from being able to do that. That's why you're seeing even now mm-hmm. a lot more black and brown people that are Uber drivers or mm-hmm. Lyft drivers, right? So there's there's still some of that going on, but you don't own Uber or Lyft. That can be they can click a button and they can pull you well, out. That, of that brings me to a great uh, 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 point. I have. Uh, a good, uh, actually, a family member that has a new service. It's called Tip a Rider. If you look on the Instagram, it's at Tip a Rider. I believe. Let me make sure that I get it correctly. African American. Hey, it's early. African American uh, company that. Oh, my phone is totally dead. African American company that is uh, basically the same as Lyft, and all you do is is tip. For the ride, as opposed to, um, so pay. you don't pay for the actual ride. You just tip. You just offer a tip. So you just give whatever you want or whatever you can. You give whatever you want, whatever you whatever. So if it you is. can't give anything, you still get a ride. You tip. It's called tip a rider. Okay. And you just give. You just. I'm optimistic for you. you. Tip up front. <laughs> I'm optimistic you tip, for you. You do have to tip up front. You tip up front. You do have oh, to yeah. offer a tip yeah. up front. But you get to. But you. But basically, it's almost like you get to barter your mm-hmm. the amount that you pay for. A oh, ride. so it don't got to be money. Hey, no, it has ladies. to be money. But you get to no. But you. It's, it has to be money. <laughs> but, you get to say, you but but it's 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 a lot like, and I think that it came in like with Uber Pool and um, it's Uber Pool because I when I went to, I went to Miami a couple weeks ago and. I chose Uber Pool for a couple of rides. We were doing a lot of Ubering different places. And I mean, you could get a ride across town for like $3 if you're okay with like letting two or three other people get in the car, which I wonder if that actually pays off because that's a lot of gas. That's starting and stopping and all that. But in any case, I do think that it does. We have to empower our community to do these things. And then we, once we empower them, we have to support we have to support. And I, I had, um, I talked to, because we've been talking about this a lot. Um, I talked to Devin Robinson, who was an economics professor and a writer and has a business that teaches black um, entrepreneurs how to get started, right? Because there's a lot of black on- people think they're entrepreneurs, but they're really not. You've just created a job for yourself. If you've created a job, you can't walk away from it. You're not an entrepreneur, right? An entrepreneur is someone who's able to create and, and offer jobs to other people. Just so... Um, he said that when we when we we have to educate black customers on how to how to support black businesses, right? Because a lot of times we get very frustrated with our own because they don't have the skilled workers that other businesses may have. Um, I've been guilty of it. Go to a black clothing store, they're closed in the middle of the day. Like I'm irritated. And I'm probably not going to come back. But he was like, when you look at the infrastructure of black businesses, we don't have the money, we don't have the capital that a lot of businesses have when they start. We don't have the network that a lot of businesses have when they start. So if you say something negative about a black business, that is going to hurt them even more. It's like we we have a lot more um, understanding with other businesses when they are not don't live up to our standards. So if you go to Starbucks and they're out of venti cups, you're irritated, but you're not going to be like, I am never going to Starbucks again. You go to a black business and they do something wrong and it's like, I'm not dealing with black businesses. You don't ever say when you go to Starbucks and there's not a cup, if there isn't. Um, I did go one time and there wasn't, not very often. But you never say I'm never going to another I white business. I quite often do do that with white businesses. Really? Yeah. Well, if, you're if, you're just if such I get a, if I get shit treatment or if I get if I feel like something wasn't up to par, I just find another service that does it. But you don't say I don't I'm not gonna uh, ever go to a white, white business, business no. again. That's what no. I'm saying. So we what we do is we say we're, we're mentally taught wrong. So when you go to a black business and the black business does not have the right service, I'm not going to any more black business. I hate dealing with us. And it's not us. It really is just... You're going to be shocked. I, I do think it's a little disingenuous, though, because we like we get shitty customer service at Walmart. Let's be for real. Get we get shitty customer. customer service. No, you don't. You stand I in like line Walmart. because there's 1,700 people in there <laughs> trying to check out and there's two registers. Yeah, I don't, at night. And, and, and we know it. We know that's that 
It's staff. They're staffed that way. And we just stand there. We don't complain. We don't say, oh, certain people may say, I'm never going to Walmart or I hate Walmart. Yeah. That's the most I've heard is I don't but like coming to Walmart. But there's a trade off, like though. No, Publix. but see, there's a value trade off there, see? Mm -hmm. Because you can go to Walmart and get every fucking thing on your list. That's the only and, reason I can't get rid and of so them. So that's why, you, that, but there, there is value to going to Walmart. If you go, if you go to a black, be cheaper. If you go to a black clothing store and it's always closed in the middle of the day when you can get there, there's no value there. It's like, I can get clothes somewhere else. Can at Walmart you can get everything. You can get almost everything on your list. There's very few things you can't get at Walmart. Well, you know what? Maybe I, I do think that we don't have a lot of patience for black business owners. Um, but like for example, if I went to a clothing store and she's and they're closed during the day, yeah, I might say, okay, I'm not coming back here to mm -hmm. to patronize clearly because I can't make a purchase, right? Mm -hmm. But if I found out if I had a relationship with that business owner and I found out that they were closing the day because they had to go and pick up their child and mm -hmm. get them from, and that's probably what like, it is. I'd rather yeah. I'd rather pay a higher rate for a service or a product because that business owner has to put their child through school, no. right? Rather than mm -hmm. rather than a CEO. Getting a third vacation home. I'm not paying or a higher another rate. yacht. I'm not paying yeah, a higher rate. I don't think rate. people want to pay a higher that, rate. I don't care if it's black, white, or whatever. I'm yeah. not paying a higher rate. What I, I what yeah. I do think it will shock you though. I actually see correlation between that and how we treat black people that do something criminal. And I've seen I've seen a lot of people online saying that when black people do something, I think Willie D was somebody who, I, who it, it resonated with me. Uh, Willie D from the Ghetto Boys, who is Willie now D. who is now kind of a, a YouTube activist. Shouts out to the Willie D. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he, what what he was saying was is that when somebody goes and does something, now all black people are on the hook on for trial, right? what yeah. this one and like when white yeah. people do it, it's just that one That's white true. guy. Same and, thing, yeah. You know, I'm probably I, even when white people show, do something racist, right? They can damn near burn a crossing yard and it's like, I need to leave this town. Right. It's not like all white people. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. We so, look at our, it's, it's a self, it's a self, it's an introspective thing because I think it's, we don't expect ourselves to do well. You know what I mean? And that, that we sounds expect bad. black failure. We expect black failure. Also, you said entrepreneurs are people that create jobs for other people. I don't know if that's necessarily true. For the people who don't have employees but are entrepreneurs, that, I, you know. See, I think that's the beginning. I get, his point is that Entrepreneurship is because a lot of people. I, I can say, admit that I've been that way. My business <laughs> has has run solely on if I'm able to be at everything right. to the point where I'm overwhelmed and overworked, and if I am not there, everything crumbles. And right. he was like, basically, you have created a job, you know, for yourself. Right. It's the same thing. No, as, no, okay, I get you. Yeah. yeah. So he's like, but you're still an entrepreneur. Still, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm just not. Mm -hmm. a, I'm just not. There's a still people trying to one. figure that out. So yeah. I don't want to not call them. Well, there's there's. Uh, there's consultants for that. Like you can scale up and there's other things that you can do and yeah. you can put people in place because you've already at least got that. Your, it's it sounds like your though. issue is like managing time. It's just difficult. It's just difficult. It's expensive. It's, just, it's, mm -hmm. it's difficult to do. It's, very, it's very difficult. And I think what he was telling, when you start with, because I didn't, I didn't take out a business loan to start my business. I just took my money. Right. So then you're already at a deficit because you have to pay your bills with your job. Mm -hmm. Right, where if you are a, a, a non African American person and you have, you know, say your parent gives you ten thousand to start something, you're starting from a very different place. But when you start from, I'm going to take this money that I need to eat with, and I'm going to put it in a business to start, and then I'm going to make sacrifices. It's great, it's admirable, but we have to realize that it's not, it's not what it looks like when people say, "I own my own business." So owning your own business is not, unless you have done it a different way, it's really not better <laughs> than working for someone else <laughs> because you when you work for someone else there's my own personal experience when I work for somebody else I get off at five o'clock or six o'clock and hopefully you're off and, uh, and you don't right. think about now, it now I've had jobs where I'm I'm you know I'm on salary and I'm kind of connected but there's still a point where I can be like mm. I'm done right when well, your own business and it, it 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 is it is what pays your bills and feeds your children you are not off and you cannot take off. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? There is no off. So it's, it really is creating, like he was saying, a prison for yourself unless makes you sense. have a plan. Right? I'm glad you clarified. That makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Now, speaking of Willie D, I watched Beyonce's Netflix. Uh, she has a song uh, called I've Been On that she shouts out being in the Willie D video um, when she was young. I have to see this video. Oh, yeah. Why? What? Willie D? 
First of all, I'm a huge Ghetto Boys fan. Okay. Well, she was one. too. She grew up in Houston. Right, yeah. but I want to see 14 year old Beyonce yeah, in the background. Yeah, she said she was in there with her Dookie bread. She was in I, there. I, I wasn't a Willie D fan during Ghetto Boys. I wasn't. Time. I wasn't a Ghetto Boys. Fan. I didn't. I didn't, I didn't think like he was that intelligent, but. You know, I later don't like the ghetto nobody boys. thought the ghetto boys were that intelligent. They were scary. The little one, Bushwick Bill, scared me. I remember. You know what? Uh, ghetto boys actually may me. have been the first Goody Mob. No, 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 no. no he's not, ghetto he's boys not, might have been the blueprint. To goody he's mob. not tripping. G- ghetto boys actually. If you go back and listen to some yeah. of their their concepts and stuff, I, don't I mean, ghetto. there was some nigga shit too, but yeah. there was some there were some concepts that started down that road. Um, okay. Scarface, of course, elevated himself to mm-hmm. legend status. Based on the, some of those concepts, but I never I like niggas and flies, niggas and flies, niggas and motherfucking flies. They love shit. I was like, what are these? He's a is what is that? What is that? Ugly people love to make you laugh. Like that, that was Willie D back in the day. So yeah. I I never like that wasn't the one I gravitated toward. Right. It was always Scarface. Scarface right. But I'm think I think probably everybody did. But come to find out, Obviously. Willie D had a lot of great stuff to say. Maybe just, that was just he was just playing his role. Yeah, maybe in the so. Group. Yeah. But, I mean, but, Bushwick had a role. You know, he scared yeah, me. Nobody knows he what really that role scared was. Me. He scared. I mean, literally, I was scared. <laughs> so Beyonce. So, so, be, so I watched Netflix <laughs> Homecoming, and I've got a statement here that I think people are going to take offense to. But I want you to think uh, about it I love before it. you 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 come after me. You be offensive, Kevin. No, Mister Kevin, think about it before you come after me. I think Beyonce is the greatest entertainer ever. I think she has surpassed Michael Jackson. I think that she is hands down the greatest entertainer. We have ever seen. Our generation has ever, period. I don't even know what would have happened before that. When you see her consistency from the time, you know, because we understand that I think the only other person that could have that title would be Michael Jackson. And you see that it was a comprehensive, you know, title because it started when he was little. But if you see Beyonce and you see her elevation from the time that she started in Destiny's Child and then to where she has become now at 36, 37 years old, she is I've, I, I think that she is the embodiment of all of that. And, and I'm saying that she probably obviously pulled a lot from Michael Jackson, from Diana Ross, from Prince. But I think that she has surpassed everything that we've seen. Beyonce definitely has no peers. And, and Dead her, or alive. Her shine, her shine offers no shade to anyone, right? However, I also watched Guava Island. Mm-hmm. And the artistic stylings of Donald Glover, mm-hmm. I think we have yet to... Like, this movie, I, I equated it to... I think this is his thriller. Mm-hmm. And I, I just... I want more people to see. I, I, I see that he's... He's so you're not saying that he's a peer. He's into, very good. You know, yeah, I'm not saying okay. that he is is a peer. Like mm-hmm. his his fame level would never be on be on the I'm Beyonce fame, level. No. I'm talking about I'm talking about performance. I think his performance is great. I think his art is great. I think the way that he has structured his art is at a high level. Okay. Um, it has nothing to do with this level. I, I think it's it, correct. It's going to be outshadowed by Beyonce's fame. And well, like, I don't think it's I mean, a competition. I mean, I had already, I listened to the album. I yeah. listened to the album. I would already saw the Coachella performance. Mm-hmm. So there were no it, yeah. surprises there. No, 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 no. We've seen that. We all saw the Coachella performance. We every, Everybody saw that last year, except you. Uh, okay. I'm I know full. you've been, you've been full, full, for, you've been for, full for years. Yeah. But, and, and, and I get that. But what I'm saying is, it's not about the Coachella performance. It's about the time and intensity. And I have a great amount of respect, as I think anyone who enjoys performances do, for someone who is at the top of their game, has nothing to prove, and still goes that hard. Like, it is unbelievable. She has nothing. She is only competing against herself at this point. And to see, so it's not about the Coachella performance. It's about the building blocks of the Coachella performance that are just beyond admirable. Mm-hmm. That's what that's what I was impressed with. I, the performance was flawless. But to see what went in and to see how, how much of the creative process she was in, involved in and how how detailed and 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 just how much energy and time and sacrifice she put in at that level in her career is mind blowing. I and, it, and I think if you watch this is it Michael Jackson is is comparable to that, but I think it surpasses that. I don't know, dude. People think that you you just become you become great and then you supposed yes. to 
I think you, people you're supposed do. to lay off. You're supposed to be yep. like, ah. yep. well, not lay off, lady. but I mean, I think people think I'm here. I'm arrived. It's it looks good. They don't. I'm the artist. I don't do puts, anything else but artists. Yeah, nobody puts. Nobody realizes the sacrifice, which is why there aren't more Beyonces because very few people are willing to put that much sacrifice into something that they feel like most people don't want to sacrifice at all. They want to take great pictures and say, hey, I'm the shit. No, and no, worse than that, they literally want to maybe maybe write the record. Maybe. And they want to perform the record and then they want to be done. Yeah. Oh, I just show up when it's time to perform the record. Yeah. Like do all the do all the other stuff. They don't even want to rehearse. Yeah, yeah do all they don't want to put in the, put in the time to it. push themselves in rehearsal. I've been with artists that I was just I just did an event and I, I won't go into details because I don't want to you know put dirt on the artist, but a new person, and I was just like, and we were like, we need you to do this. I'm not doing that. And I'm like, wow. Like, I don't I don't think people understand. This woman is, she has nothing to prove. Right, and still is. And mm-hmm. still Hard. is Hardcore five going. months out. I'm on my anniversary with my husband. I'm going to rehearsal first, and, and, her, and Jay-Z is like, hey, I'm just sitting around. And he looked like he was in awe of her, but she's just so... She's like a machine. I just I I think that she's the greatest performer ever. I think that you know is she a clone? She, she might be a clone. She may be. She I kind of like she's like a machine. I don't have like, that much energy to how do is anything. She possibly <laughs> that. Person? You know. You know what? It's going to be. It's really going to be interesting to see when Beyonce dies. Whoa. Well, damn. Why? Because you think it's going to be like <sighs> elter skelterism? Um. Been- no. <laughs> it's it's people already. Hold her on in the light of of royalty. Do they faint like they do for my, did for Michael Jackson? Like, I don't know that they faint. Okay, I think some people do because you watch. But they ain't far. Yeah, yeah. If if anybody is going to be fainted, it's or excuse me, if there's a, someone <laughs> to faint for, it's going to be Beyonce. It will be Beyonce. Oh, yeah. But I think that people. I think the difference between Beyonce's fame and Michael Jackson's fame is that you remember with Michael Jackson there was an era of mystery. Beyonce has created as much mystery as possible, but still with social Almost media, impossible. it's yeah. impossible to do that. So we mm-hmm. see so much of her life. There's exposed. You could catch her someplace, take a picture. Michael Jackson, you never saw. Like I grew up a huge Michael Jackson fan. I never saw Michael Jackson in person ever. You know what I mean? You just and if he was someplace, nobody was going to be like, "Hey, this is Michael Jackson shopping." We've seen Beyonce coming out to go when she's pregnant. Like we've just seen a lot of different things that take away from that mystique that causes the tears and the dramatics. I feel like, you know, you're just not going to get that level of celebrity at this point. You know what though? I just thought about something as well. Beyonce, both Beyonce and Michael Jackson were supported in their were supported in their art from a very young age. They started. They were pushed by right. fathers that were. And and we did we no don't nonsense. support. We, we were just talking about black businesses and stuff. We don't necessarily support, especially our young people from that age with whatever it is. Well, they I don't think they do. had community support. I think they had a parent. I think Serena. Well, if that's you watch, where it starts. If you, but I'm saying I think I think if you watch the documentary of Serena and her father, very much the same, and she is unstoppable. I mean, he created a machine. I'm not sure where she came from, but her, and her sister as well. But I mean, you see what their father put into them without. Um, with 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 no sacrifice or compromise, with no compromise. This is you're going to be great with no compromise. It was a, fa- a father's input, and I think that's a consistent theme between all three of them. Now, the Beyonce and Beyonce homecoming. Also, I was looking at it because everybody feels like Beyonce and Jay Z's relationship is like the model relationship, you know, to to be after. At many points in the Jay Z comes out and performs, but he, I I never see any footage of him rehearsing. And I never see any footage of him doing anything. In fact, while she was in there, he's just looking at her like, and then she's telling the people and she's intense. And then he's just like, okay, y'all heard it? Yeah. And then he walks out with her. He's like in awe of her. But it, it led me back to our question that we talked about, about, you know, what are the part, what are the benefits of marriage? Because people are like they're equal partners, but I think that Beyonce works much harder than Jay-Z. I think that Jay-Z um, offers what a husband maybe is supposed to offer. There's a scene in the movie where, well, in the documentary where she's she's finally lost enough weight to get back in her old costume and she calls him and she's like, look, I have the costume on. And he's like, okay. And she's like, you could just see that she wants his approval, right? Now, she's busting her ass, working, working, working. He's just chilling. He doesn't even really say much rather than, Okay, great. And then she's like, they never understand the lady that... that, that." Yeah, it was like one of those women, like she's still a woman, even though she's like amazing and everything. She still has that, you know, woman thing that wants 
validation from. So basically, you're saying after have 15, 15 years, Jay Z don't give a shit either, right? Just like every other regular Pretty ass much. dude, like this goal shit. So what I'm goals, saying, what break. is the benefit? I don't want to hear about your day. We've been together fifteen what years. What is the benefit of you of marriage? What is the benefit? We have uh, an expert. We do. This, we? we do. So see who who would benefit more? Who do we feel like today in today's world benefits more? And we'll let the experts weigh in first. So no, do we go? We went first last time. So do we go first this time? And then we got all proven wrong or right by the expert. <laughs> yeah, I don't know who's gonna. I I feel like men benefit more, and I'm gonna use this. I think that Beyonce and Jay Z. Beyonce is the workhorse. Jay Z sits on top of the horse and is like, oh, this is great. So we're just gonna use Beyonce and Jay Z. I think. As it, the, I think it's. Cat- a, I think it's, a, it's. It's every situation. I think the wife. She cooks. She cleans. She does all kinds of stuff. She feeds his ego, and he just comes home and is like, "Okay, everything is fine. Good, awesome. <laughs> it's horrible. We just. It's just very unfair. And um, I think we keep signing up for it. I think it. that's so. I think. I think. I think men benefit far more. I think than that's women. an outside from. That's an outside view, and you don't really know what's going on on the inside. I like, was in like, one. For oh, 13 years yeah, yeah However But not that one And um, Well no She's talking about, talking about In general I, just, I meant in general Not I don't, just Jay-Z I don't mean, Beyonce Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and that's why I said It's hard to generalize Because no, to Because it. who's Who's to say So out of Barack and Michelle Who benefited more Michelle I mean, You're gonna say Just because he was president But she was like no, Way Michelle, better Michelle stop it She didn't do shit yeah. What? Stop it. She didn't do shit. She didn't do shit. Are you kidding me? Name she was one his thing. Ins- well, first of all, she was way ahead of him. He benefited from her. He probably way got ahead his of whole him professional well, well, swag. Well, well. She was like working no, no, in a no, professional. No, 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 no. Uh, Nothing she did prior to him being elected mattered compared to him getting elected. That is not true. Bruh. That is she was, <laughs> that was, that, she no, was that's <laughs> definitely an accomplishment that outshined <laughs> like I had to call you bruh. Bruh. Come on, like <laughs> come on. No. Just saying. No. I'm not saying that not Michelle wasn't it. great in her own lane. Was she? But I think especially in a you in a relationship. A was anybody saying yo, Michelle Obama's name prior to her? Yo, being there's the, the people first lady. in it, politics know. I mean, people that I know in, we in want her, that in super her, couple. Her, people are not always gonna say love phrases. It's a circle, though. Dude, I know we want that say. super couple, so but awesome. it's just not always going to be that. Somebody has to be the star, and somebody has to. Take but I'm the talking backseat. about the benefits. Like, what is the because because the star factor is for external. We're talking about benefits. So, what's the benefit? Like, what do you consider a benefit? I don't. I, what fame? I'm saying, I, no. Well, period. Whatever it is for you. I I work really hard, right? I I buy all my things myself. I do everything. Now, I feel like. You know, and I'm not saying I don't want to get married because I do, but when I get married, I'm just going to have a lot more work to do. I'm going to have to keep doing all the work that I'm already doing. Maybe. Plus have more work with him. And that's mm-hmm. overwhelming. And he's not going to do any more work. See, I don't know about that. Because what what was he doing before he got married to you? Hopefully making a lot of money. No, no, no. See, but, but see what you just did. Instead of saying the other things that he was doing, like what you said, when you come home, you have to do this, you have to do that. What do you think he was doing when he got Probably home? Probably had other girls doing it for him. Uh, okay. See, that's a single, so, <laughs> single guys I know have girls doing stuff for them. So, okay, fair enough. But in my marriage, we do separate some things, chores, or if you want to call them that, or whatever. Yeah. And you know, there there are many a times tasks. There are many times you have my a wife do list. There are many times my wife doesn't fulfill her side of the of the list. I don't believe that. That is very true. It's, <laughs> it's just human. You know, sometimes I don't fulfill my side of the list. Some, okay, I'm like, okay, I'm glad you you, you balance it out. Okay, <laughs> I thought you were going to say she doesn't do hers and you do yours. Uh, here's 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 what I think. I <laughs> I think that in in the marriage, men probably benefit more. Thank you. If the marriage were to stop existing, or if the man died, I think the woman. Well, obviously she dies. Yeah. But I think the woman gets more value from that. Okay, I'll I'll, I'll go with that. But that's why, as it's, long as he has money, because if he's broke, then she's fucked. I think that's, I think that's divisive. <laughs> what is what right, I said? The, yeah, the, the whole question: who benefits more is so divisive. It is divisive. divisive. It is. It is. Yeah. It really is about. Let's see what the expert says. All right. Okay. Terry was well, okay. So our expert is Terry Duran. He's a relationship expert. You can find him on IG at Terry Duran. T E R R Y D E R O N. And he has usually very male heavy opinions. So he usually his pendulum usually swings to. The the male perspective. What's going on, everybody? It's Terry Duran, and I'm responding to the question, who benefits more from marriage, men or women? Um, I, I, I have to say, I think women benefit overall more than men do. Um, that's probably why women desire to be married a lot more than men do. Um, that's not to say that men or women don't benefit from marriage. Marriage typically benefits you if you are, if you want to have a family or a long-term relationship where 
You want to make sure your spouse is protected if something happens to you. Um, you want to get a commitment where you theoretically you think that the person is going to do everything they can to make the marriage work. Um, that turns out to not be the case for a lot of people um, because people, some people have some very selfish or um, I, I don't know is exactly the right word for it, but their their reason for getting with a particular person is not really a pure intention. It, it could be selfish in nature, money, greed, status, things of that nature. So in those type of instances, um, a person is not likely to put forth the effort to make a relationship work. They're not going to be reasonable. They're not going to be understanding. They're not going to try to work on resolutions that work for both people. They're just going to maintain their stance and kind of present a take it or leave it type of attitude. <clears throat> um, but as far as who benefits from marriage, I think uh, women get a lot of security, especially. It's, well, I guess that that question really depends on if you marry somebody that's a qual that's husband material. Um, so let's let's just say just for the sake of argument, we're talking about a quality woman and a quality man. Um, I think a, a woman is going to benefit more from the from the marriage because she's going to get the security that comes with the man. Most most quality men put themselves secondary to their family. They put their family's needs and wants above theirs. Um, at least I mean. They always put their family's needs above their wants. I guess that's a better way of phrasing it. Um, and, and they don't have animosity or resentment towards not being able to buy what they wanted, not being able to spend money on what they wanted to spend it on. That's part of the sacrifice that comes with being a man. Um, and so I think women benefit from a being in a relationship with a quality man um, by those things. Um <clears throat> There are a lot of things that come that men benefit from marriage as well. Um, if you're with a quality woman, that means your children, your household is going to be uh, maintained and taken care of. You're going you should be contributing to doing those things. Um, but those are those are those are the kind of the, the primary benefit from from a man for marriage is, is centered around your household and your family and how well they're taken care of and maintained and the security you get from knowing that if something happened to you, that will still take place. Um, the the money and the assets that you leave behind won't be used or given given up or used for some frivolous things. That type of peace of mind is probably the biggest benefit that a man gets from marrying a quality woman. Outside of having someone that you find physically attractive and the, and the physical benefits that mo uh, mutually benefit the, the husband and the wife. So in regards to the question, I think women benefit more than men, even though the, the difference might not be a whole lot. You know what? So his 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 um, explanation just made me realize I think that's probably equal because he did bring up a good point that a quality we're talking about quality husband. He is going right. to do be, be a person that's um, that's very sacrificial in nature. But I think the same thing with the wife. So if you have a, a marriage that is a quality one where both are making sacrifices and I think both people benefit. You know, because I think when I answered initially, I'm looking at the situation of a of a of what I've seen a lot of, which is a very selfish guy <laughs> and a woman. And women tend to be nurturers and and I tend to let me not say women. I tend to be that way. So I'm always trying to make everybody around me happy. But and if I'm with someone that doesn't have that same outlook, then I would be overwhelmed. But if you're in a situation that is that is Good right. and positive, then both people should be doing that. So it's a benefit on both sides. Yes, the house will be maintained. The support is important on both sides. Finances are one thing, but having the support of somebody when you go through things like parents' death or financial loss, you have a support system built in there, and it's teamwork. That is a that is a benefit, I think, to both sides. So I'll I'll I'll, re I'll withdraw my initial. Um, mm. Mm. Uh, answer and say I was what? wrong. It's, it's benefit to it's a equal benefit if if you're in a good situation. What? <laughs> you have something to say about it? I do. No. I have I, something. I, <laughs> something that I, I recognize while we we're listening. I think now I'm, I'm back on the guy side because guys have the um, it's the expectation to just deal with shit sometimes. Oh. For instance, I know for a fact that my arm, my bicep is probably about two inches smaller in, in circumference, <laughs> and my fingers kind of 
they just naturally curl in. And that's because I'm constantly having to hold my woman while we sleep. And <laughs> she kills that arm a little bit every time she lays on it. And I can't complain about that. It's like, I just want to be next to you, baby. You're right, yeah. But my arm is dying a little bit every night. Yeah, what what do women have to deal with like that? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Name one thing like that. Nobody made you wear high heels. You chose that shit. Beauty is pain. But no, I'm no, talking no, about no. just no, no, no. I'm no. talking about just sleeping. No, I can't even sleep. I have mm-hmm. gone out with guys that wanted me to wear heels. I know that that was an expectation. And their men like their women to look nice when they go out. Okay, in bed, what? What do? You, oh, <laughs> that was I saying. Bed, what do you guys have to do where you die a little bit? But sometimes y'all aren't happy when you're in bed. So yeah. <laughs> there might be a lot. Sometimes <laughs> I've been sweated on. <laughs> I didn't you don't like, like it. sweat. I don't like sweat to drop Even, in my face. No. There are some women who like the smell of their man when he's sweating, and like they, they're attracted that, you know to what? that. That is don't. What it is is that she doesn't actually like that. She's just in love with him. No, man. no, it is. no. Yes, no. it is. No, it's not. It's I not swear true. it is. That is when you're just in love. Because when you're in love, this is, this is what happens. When you're in love with somebody and they sweat on you, you're like. Oh, okay, well, how much sweat are we talking about? It, it's too much. No, come on. Now. We're, if you're dripping, if you're if you're like having a rainforest, it was a moment, making my eyes burn. Yeah, that's too. If it's getting it. all in your eyes, come on. That's I don't not like what I'm talking it. About. I hate it. I a little sweat never hurt nobody. Uh, well, this is not a little. This is a person that is out of shape. <laughs> 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 I've dealt with it before, but no, I think that women women are um, we we both love from a different perspective. So when a woman is in love, you you just everything he does is great. And if he, you know, can't get it back up, it's like, okay, I understand. If he can't get when it back not, up. you're not, you're like, Man. Imagine, if he can't get it back up, you just right. slid that in there. <laughs> right. B, you're right, though. Uh, women don't understand what it's like to have somebody's heavy ass. <laughs> head? And t- head, body, all, like, just cut off the entire circulation from your arm. Right. Or somebody want to sit on your lap and they heavy as shit and, you know, your knees shaking and shit. You you're know? like, I, I kind of mm. want to move around at night. I don't want to hey, be babe, cemented like, to this spot to you side. Know, like, I love you and all, but blood still has to circulate in my body. You're supposed to be big enough for people. I mean, strong enough. You, you, you should see, be strong. You see, no mercy. Veins no don't mercy. know size. They just know <laughs> cut off. They know there's no connection to the brain. That's what they know. Can I tell you something? I hear all this, and and yet when I get into bed with my intended, I'm still going to lay on his chest. I want to, yeah. and I want to sit on his lap. So I'm sorry if the blood can't get through. You just have to figure it out. That's all right. The blood will go somewhere else, and you can handle that. <laughs> <laughs> Ten up. See what oh, I man. did there? I did. That was good. That was good. Today, this, this was good, though. This was yeah. good. I think we, we ended, even though you guys have a couple of little complaints, we ended on a good note. A good marriage right. is good for both. It makes both people better. And we still have no idea what the fuck Bushwick Bill does or did. Well, he, I really hope he got that eye fixed. Mm, who cares? I hope he did. Really. No, I just hope, you know, hope he did. Because I don't know if, I mean, it was scary for the video, but I mean, for real life, if he's out there still, still dealing with it. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean still dealing with it? You, I mean, you, I'm just hoping there's like, there's you can get like a, a fake eye now. Like, hopefully you got a fake eye with a pupil in there or something. That was really weird. Did that scare you? That scared the crap out of me when I was younger. What? Ooh, my eyes playing tricks on me. It was a, it was a, it was a, ho- an evil Halloween video. Like, <laughs> like, share, and subscribe. We'll see you guys next time. Peace. Music Love Life.